This is uh, a piece from uh, one of our favorite uh, mystic poets, Sufi uh, Jalaluddin Rumi, who in the 12th century would (coughs) gather with uh, the Sufi initiates, the dervishes, the whirling dervishes. They would dance in whirling dances all night long until dawn, all night long as a part of their sacred ritual to open themselves up to that which might flow into them, flow through them of wisdom. And perhaps this is one of the many things that Rumi wrote in those early morning hours. Who gets up early to discover the moment light begins? Who finds us here circling, bewildered like atoms? Who comes to a spiral, who who comes to a spring thirsty and sees the moon reflected in it? Who, like Jacob, blind with grief and age, smells the shirt of his son, his lost son, and can see again? Who lets a bucket down and brings up a flowing prophet? Or like Moses, goes for fire and finds what burns inside the sunrise. Jesus slips into a house to escape enemies and opens a door to the other world. Solomon cuts open a fish and there's a gold ring. Omar storms in to kill the prophet and leaves with blessings. Chase a deer and end up everywhere. An oyster opens his mouth to swallow One drop, now there's a pearl. A vagrant wanders empty ruins. Suddenly he's wealthy. But don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth. Without complicated explanation, so everyone will understand the passage, we have opened you. Start walking. Your legs will get heavy and tired. Then comes a moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. To the trades I've missed, the loves I've lost, the bridges I've burned, the rivers I never crossed. Here's to the call I didn't hear, the signs I didn't need, the roads I didn't take, the maps that I just couldn't read. It's a big old world, but I found my through the hell and the hurt Let me straight to this Here's to the trains I miss I've been a clown, I've been a fool And I pushed on every chance I searched far and wide Trying to crawl out of God's hands There were stones I didn't throw there were hearts I didn't break And a little hope that I held on to With each silver shining thread of faith It's a big old world But I found my way Through the hell and the hurt That led me straight to the Here's to the trains I met There's a place that I've found, the love that I've known, the earth and the sky, the 
that I call home It's the things I need Bigger than me The moments I find myself Right where I'm supposed to be To be the world But I find my way Through the head and the hurt That led me straight to this It's a free To the trains I miss Good music this morning. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> you know, when I see this, um, when I see this piece that Rumi wrote in the 12th century, I think has has there ever since the 12th century been anyone who could put into words so much of this journey, and. And has there really been any progress in the human soul since the 12th century? Sometimes I wonder. It seems like there's been a lot of progress. There's been a lot of progress in other ways. But in terms of the human heart and, and really grasping something of this amazing, mysterious journey of the human, human life, you know, it, I, I think Rumi captures it so often, and with these words, unfold your own myth. You know, don't just be satisfied with the stories of others, but his sensitivity to recognizing how moments of life are transformative and how being open to those moments is what it's all about. And he says... Who comes to a spring thirsty and sees the moon reflected in it? That line goes by so quick you don't even really notice. To think, you know, it is true. We often go to things already defined for what we're coming for and don't notice the rest. Being thirsty, I only see the water. I never see the moon reflected in it. Life has these richness, has this richness throughout it. It's woven into it, this glory, this amazing creative beauty, as if in every stone, in every reflection, some bit of this wondrous creator, this uh, creative energy that we celebrate is living and breathing all through us and all through life. We are that, that it's our identity. But we close ourselves to so much. It's, maybe it's, it's not that, uh, we, that we ourselves seek to kind of close ourselves off to life, but more that often the experiences of life are reacted to in a way that we begin to become defensive and we close our eyes to things that are all around us, that are always present. And only when we find our way out of the boxes of our, our narrow vision with our blinders do we sometimes, in looking back at our lives, notice that there were all kinds of things happening around us, supporting us, bringing possibilities and love. The song that Brad just saying, here's to the trains I missed, however, doesn't necessarily mean that somehow we, we, by missing the train of things that we didn't see in the past, are on any long, bad path. 
We are here. We are this. That song reminds me that it doesn't matter what the wounds of your past may be. It doesn't matter what may have closed the doors in your mind. Those broken places, those narrow channels, those places where life became somehow a little less free, are still the paths on which we find love and beauty and give what we have to offer. We give our own gifts with what we have. You know, there's that great story. Someone's going to have to tell me who it was. Who was the famous uh, violinist um, who finished the concert with, uh, without Perlman? It's like Perlman. There's a great story where he's, uh, you know, uh, he's got polio. You know, he had polio as a child. He, he comes on the stage with the, the crutches. And, and uh, in the midst of this grand concert, he, he's performing this incredible piece, and one of the strings breaks. And, of course, everyone... <laughs> Hello. This could be that. <laughs> and everyone, everyone thinks, oh, this is going to be terrible because now, you know, we're going to have to watch him get up, go offset, change the string on this fabulously wonderful historic instrument that he plays, and then come back. This could be 30 minutes of a break in the concert. But orchestra stops, the... Uh, Conductor looks at Perlman, and Perlman is adjusting his instrument, and he looks back at the conductor, and he says, proceed. And Perlman goes back to performing and does the rest of the solo and the rest of the concert with three strings. And after the concert, someone asked him, they said, what? It's amazing, how did you do that? He said, there comes a point in life where you, you know you've got to keep going with what you've got. You do what you can with what you have. And we all have a lot. It doesn't matter what broken strings may have happened in our lives, you know. We all have a lot. If you don't believe that, just pause for a moment and think about all the amazing gifts in your life. In here, sometimes we talk about some of the ways in which our lives get kind of narrowed down by life. And, and it's important to find ways to open it up. But it's also important to recognize that the most important openness in our lives is to open ourselves up to the gift that we are. The gift that you are now. Not that you might become. But the gift that you are now. You know, maybe this passage that we read this morning where Jesus heals the, the man who was mute is an example of what could happen for us as well. He says, Ephatha, which means be open. Whatever may have happened in our own lives, in our own childhoods maybe, that robbed us of more capacity to have a voice in life, to sing our song, to live our myth instead of being satisfied with the stories of others. Whatever it is that may have robbed us of some of that voice, it's important to be open to how it could, with whatever we have, continue to be what it is and be that voice and let it continue. To take that first step to be on the journey. I love it where at the end of this poem by Rumi, he says, start walking. Start walking. Your legs will get heavy and tired. Then comes a moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. Sometimes... We just have to start walking with what we have, with who we are, and begin to trust somehow, like that mute man, 
that somewhere along the way, healing for those things that we need will happen. We may not find it immediately, but we'll never find it if we don't just start walking. This season, uh, between now and Lent, we're doing this series right now on the artist's way. What is this creative path of faith? Where what we are somehow called to do is birth that which we, we are and what we're called to be somehow. And when I, I think about the creative path, when I think about the, what it means to live out of that center of creativity, be open is probably one of the most important things that you could ever say to an artist. Just be open. I was thinking about, you know, well, what is it to be open? You know, what's the difference between being open and being closed? What does being closed look like? Well, being closed is just kind of what happens to you along the way sometimes. It's just the stuff that you pick up along the way that's, that's narrowed. To be open is to somehow be open to possibility, to continue this, this journey of learning. The greatest way of being closed is to no longer be open to learning. It's interesting that, you know, being open and being closed, you know, sometimes people might say, okay, you know, people who are really open, uh, they're just kind of open to everything. They're just not discerning. They don't know how to say no. They don't know that some things aren't as valuable as others. There's times to be closed. But, you know, if you're really open, you're also open to knowing that there are times that you can be open to being closed. <laughs> and the problem is that if you're closed, you're closed. Nowhere in the concept of being closed is there the concept of being open. And somehow, for me, I find that our culture and our world is in need of more people who are on the side of figuring out how to be open than how to be closed. There's a time to close doors. There's a time and a season for everything. But the time and the season in our world today seems to call upon people of faith to live creatively into their openness to discover somehow what it is that they have been blind to, where the blinders have led away from the capacity to create wholeness, to give birth to some kind of just and caring and compassionate and deeply connected world. We're much better at building fences and walls. We're much better at punishing other people than finding a way to understand and build connective ways of change. And so the journey in my, my perspective, for me and for those of us seeking to just find a path in this world where we can live out that which we're called and feel true to, has more to do with figuring out how to be open. Interestingly enough, we carry some of those patterns of being closed in our bodies. And so one of the best ways to experience challenging the patterns of our closedness is through moving our bodies. And you've probably guessed it, that that's what we're about to do. <laughs> it's a little thing we do in here every now and then as a way to kind of celebrate life with more than our brains. Because we live in a world that has way too much brain and far too little heart and even less feet. And so, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to join hands. We're going to sing this little song called Mayim, written by our friend Howard. And it, it will be accompanied by some movements, which I will just demonstrate for you now, because you won't be able to see me when you all stand up. And it goes like this. It goes, sing it for us, Tom. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. Mayim, 
Mayan. Come now, holy water, come and heal our thirst. Let me get on the back screen. Mayan. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. Never mind, it's not. Then maybe it's on the front screen. Yeah, if we could go a couple of pages forward in the PowerPoint. One more, please. There we go. I knew it was there somewhere. That's it. Okay, here we go. So sing along with me and I'll show you the movements. Okay, here we go. Come now. Okay. Okay, that's so Come now, holy water, come and heal our earth. My Grapevine step, then this way. Come now, holy water, come to quench our thirst. My my Then we drop hands. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. Then you clap, right? You gotta clap. It's kind of an Israeli feel, right? Okay. Though I need dance lessons, maybe you can help me. Stand up and we'll do this together. So just reach up. We'll hook up uh, hands like this. Here we go. Come on in. Here we go. So we'll start off a little bit to the left. Here we go. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. My my To the right. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. My now drop hands. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. You, you guys are doing this way better than me already. Okay. So, as we dance, we don't just dance, you know. You can get self-conscious about dancing, but, you know, it's better if you don't. Just face it, you know, it's better if you don't get self-conscious. And as you dance, I want you to consider the possibility that you're actually doing something. You're, you're not just moving. You're moving toward more openness in your life, right? I mean, clearly you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now if you weren't moving toward more openness in your life, right? Okay, so here we go. To the left. Come now, holy water, come and heal our earth. My end, my end. To the right. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. My end, my end. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. Beautiful. All right, now, I want you to think of one thing, one thing in the world around you right now where you feel like there needs to be something new, some, some new openness. Maybe it's something in your heart, maybe it's something in your life, something in your relationships where things have gotten too closed, where you need more openness. Maybe it's in the community where there's some conflict between people, maybe in your work or school, or maybe if you can't think of anything else, I want you to hold in your mind for this next verse, Congress. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Come now, holy water, come and heal our thirst. My end. My end. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. My end. My end. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. Okay, now, just stand there for a second. We got a few things we want to pray about, as long as we're doing this. We're going to say some things. We got a few people who want to join the church today. Elizabeth Wills is going to join the church today. And I think we got somebody else. And I don't have, I'm, I'm, I'm Laura Daggett. And so, um, anybody else want to join the church today? Anybody else? Okay, so we ask of, of the two of you, will you be faithful to the United Methodist Church with all your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? I will. I will. We welcome you. 
Thanks for uh, being a part of our community and, um, and joining the dance. And uh, <clears throat> so we'll, uh, ha- they'll be up here after the celebration if you want to greet them and welcome them. Or you could just dance with them again right now. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, you got to dance. And uh, as, we, uh, as we do this, we also uh, want to remember in our, in our circle, you know, the, the, the wisdom in the circle dance is is that this isn't just uh, a circle that includes those of us holding hands. It's a circle that it actually is about encompassing and representing, as the Native Americans said, the sacred hoop of all our relationships, all our relations. And so we dance not just for ourselves and for our community, but for the world. Let's, let's do this one more time together. Come now, holy water, come and heal our hurts. My end, my end. Come now, holy water, come and quench our thirst. My end, my end. Epitha, may my heart be open. Epitha, may my mind be open. Epitha, may my life be open. Epitha, be open. Let's pray. Holy One, as we leave from this place, grant us the wisdom to find the place in our lives that need to crack open. And the places where they're already cracked, maybe let us lean towards the light that comes through the cracks and recognize the ways every wound opens us to possibility, to new learning. Help us never be closed to that and to the gift that we are as we are. Help us to remember when we need to, to just start walking. And so find our wings. So we pray. Amen.